Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the City Griffin Board of Commissioners workshop meeting, May 23rd, 2023. We're going to have a discussion in regards to update on potential and ongoing SPLOS 2016 T SPLOS ARPA and CAD projects. City Manager Jessica O'Connor will address. Morning. Good morning. So it is just about that time to go ahead and provide you an update on all the different funds that we have um, that we are using right now for different projects. I would first like to thank Ms. Eller for putting the majority of this together um, because I have been deep in budget. So she really sort of helped with this. And if y'all have questions, I may have to defer to her. Um, but first, I want to talk about the Acton Spas projects that we have going on. Um, the Hammond Poplar intersection, if you'll remember, we are paying for out of Spas. Um, and we are currently acquiring right of way. So I actually was in Becco and Murray last Friday and signed two uh, closing statements. So we have purchased two properties and then we are designing for utility relocation as well. Um, Ells Way, we are also conducting right of way acquisitions. So we have um, hired Mr. Steve mainly to do both of those projects. He's working through those now. Uh, we do think we have an agreement with the DFW for a little portion of their property that we need. Um, so both of those are proceeding nicely. The Poplar Street Bridge um, was not a project that we even intended to have to do anytime soon, but since we had some excess spots money, we are going to be able to pull it from that. Um, Norfolk Southern is reviewing that now since it does go over the railroad, and we are awaiting their comments. Uh, the golf course culverts was another thing that we need to have done. Um, so we are currently working on finalizing that design, and we do have to permit that with the Corps of Engineers. The parking deck repairs, uh, we have received those bids back and so Marisa and her team are going through them now to see if we will be awarded um, the contract to repair the parking deck. Also, just to let you know, we talked about this before, but I am working through a draft of a notice to the county and the, um, the tenants, I guess, in the parking deck currently, that we will not be renewing their lease and so they will have 30 days to, to vacate. Those will no longer be reserved spaces. It will be open to the public. So we will be working with some painting and some um, ways to get up the reserve parking and taking down signs. But we also are going to sign our parking deck a little better so you understand we will still reserve this section right here for our customer service um, customers rather than those that are going to the courthouse. We're going to try and do a little bit of work to better delineate what um, you can do in that parking deck because a lot of people do not believe that it's open to the public. And then lastly, uh, we will be paving the road at the landfill. Um, so they are working on some same thing right now to figure out what that looks like since it will be a full depth reclamation, which means it is the first time that it has been paid. A little more work than just going out there and laying some asphalt or concrete over the current dirt. So those are our active cross projects right now. In the future, um, we hope to be able to strike uh, relocate State Route 155. We need to do some paving at the transfer station as well and then also paving out in Westminster. Um, all of those are somewhat tentative for different reasons. Um, striping the transfer station in Westminster is more because of our budget, what we can deliver after um, the other SPLOS projects that we have. And then also um, it's based on where we are with storm damage and when we start getting in reimbursements. Um, of course, State Route 155 is sort of up to GDOT at this point. We are waiting to hear back from them in regards to the concept plan that our engineers submitted. Um, we have not heard back from them, but we do expect that one of the comments always is that we have to do a public information meeting. So Brett, uh, Brian Upson with Paragon is already preparing for that along with Hazen and Sawyer. And so we'll look for that hopefully in the near future, because once that is done and our concept plan is approved, it moves up our funding opportunity. Right now it is 2032, and that is not acceptable in that. That's nine more years of trucks coming through here. So hopefully once that paving uh, or once that concept plan is approved, we can move that up and get that out of the town where it needs to be. Do we have a fund that's been set aside for 155, like a million dollars? We do. About a million dollars to set aside? Yes. Uh, All right. Um, next, our proposed striping list for phase one, you can see uh, the list there Merriweather Street, Crescent Road, Kincaid. Hammond Drive, Tilney Avenue, South Third Street, South Fourth Street, South Pine Hill, North Pine Hill, and B Street. Again, we are suggesting at this point that we let that sort of be a next phase um, after we do some paving. And once we get that paving bid back, we do have that out right now because we don't know what those costs are going to look like and how long it'll be until we are 
reimbursed from, from storm damage. So that is your SPLOST project moving into TSPLOST. Um, we are using our TSPLOST funds to mill and resurface. We released that bid May 17th. And so um, we are still accepting uh, bids right now, have a lot of questions. Um, and that will open, it will be middle of June um, sometime. Uh, and we have proposed 2.69 miles of street to be milled and resurfaced. So this is not just coming in and laying over what's there. This is actually sort of digging down, milling it out so we keep it in curves that we may currently have. And that list is Attavale Street, Allen Street, Windsor Way, East Broad Street, Ridgewood Drive, East Poplar Street, East Wall Street, Rock Street, South 14th Street, and Will Street. So again, everything is somewhat tentative depending on the results of the bid. Construction costs continue to increase and when we are able to get that reimbursement, but we do believe we will proceed with at least those streets. We also are gonna look at sidewalk and pedestrian connectivity. Uh, the proposed ones that, um, I, there's the first one I wanna actually address with you all. So let me go through the, the, the next ones first. Maddox Road, Wesley Drive, East College Street, Merriweather Street, Carver Road, and Terrace Hill Court. That would all be sidewalk there. Carver Road is one that I think everybody is one of, it's been on the master plan for years and years. The, the concern becomes that Spalding County is ready to move forward now. They wanna put it out to bid and they want to know if we want to join in that bid. They did go ahead and have Paragon do um, the design and our portion of that construction based on Paragon's design is almost $450,000. So that is half of your money that you, you said that you were going to spend on sidewalks in the cheese box. We put a million dollars in for sidewalks. Um, Marisa believes that a lot of that other can be done in-house. Um, we could potentially do Carver Road in-house. Our guys know how to do sidewalks. So we could cut that cost pretty significantly, but timing-wise, we would not be able to do it at the same time as the county. So I need a little bit of direction from you all and it might not look the same because it's going to be two different contractors doing it. Um, so I need some direction on how y'all want to proceed. Yes, um, on the sidewalk, the pedestrian connectivity. How were these particular streets? So we are. looked at where sidewalks already were and where they just ended at nowhere. And then we are trying to pick those back up and finish them to the edge of the city limits. Okay. So um, my concern is that on, on this particular list, I see nothing on the north side of the railroad track. Right, and I think that sort of to Marisa's point, because there's so much damage of sidewalks there, we want to put that in phase two so we can not only just repair the damage that is there, but also, because that'll be reimbursed, but also continue them because there's a lot there that also just stop nowhere. So, also on the list, the paving list, mm -hmm. um, I understand that it's, that, that's my same concern because okay. I write daily on some streets on North Side that are, um, I, and I'm, what I'm thinking is that y'all were saying strikes that are not fit to be striped because of the conditions that they're in. Okay. So I'm, I would just want to make sure that we're looking at that area. Yes, we, so we looked, there's a, if you remember, we did a road assessment. We actually hired somebody to come in and do a road assessment. They drove all of our streets and so they, gave us sort of a score based on condition, based on when they were last paid. We disagreed with some of them. And so Marisa's dad wrote every single street as well. And also went through what the, the you know, outside source said, and then also what we said. And so there are some areas that I think are need to be paid um, in every single district. And so every single area of the city, so they, they are certainly coming. Um, this one, I know Rock, South 14th, Will, Attavale, all of that we chose to do in the medical overlay district because we have a developer coming in um, at Collins Street, Raven Street. And so we wanted to go ahead and get all those done because they'll be doing those when they come in. 
Um, so we are trying to be very cognizant of what, what is the worst out there so we can get out there and take it. Good. You say you went for the rich on that Carver Road project. Yes. Um, I'm in agreement with Marisa um, that we try to do as much as we can in house. And I'm not in favor of going in any um, deal with the county. I would rather <clears throat> try to do it in, in house. Okay. That's no one we're going If we save money, that makes uh, we that route. I'm, yeah, sure we can, I'm sure our style will match up with what's there that would be beneficial to everybody. That's, that's fine by me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is everybody on board with that? Okay. Thank you. Um, the other thing that, that could be very good news is that hopefully no later than the end of June, we will know whether or not we have been awarded what is called a raise grant. That was submitted very quickly because it was found by a citizen sort of late in the game. Um, but Three Rivers Regional Commission, our Economic Development, Public Works, and Planning Development Departments all worked together um, to, to submit a grant that would create some create, uh, connectivity on the north side, um, which would start... I want to say welcome. The $25 million grant, um, it is for construction, it's for engineering and construction. It is a reimbursable grant, though. So we have to spend the money and then they pay us back. They will pay us back in phases. We don't have to spend $25 million to wait to get $25 million back. So we hope to hear back from that no later than June 28th with the storm. That does actually give us some extra uh, points there. So we hope and are very, um, and our sort of pre scoring looks very favorable. So we hope to have a huge award here soon. All right. Future T SPAS projects that were also um, approved with our referendum is an intersection improvement at College Kincaid in Hamilton. We want to do the streetscape still between um, 6th and 8th on Taylor Street to match what we did with the LCI, uh, State Alley and Bank Street parking lot and the alley development. And then we agreed that we would resurface approximately three miles for Orchard Hill. That will go out as a bid with the county because we'll just give them the money. Um, it was just a flat amount and then they can resurface whatever it is. And we're working on an um, intergovernmental agreement for them to sign. We agree that that's what we're paying. There's nothing left to be paid. Um, we're also looking at grants for the preliminary engineering of the College of Hamilton intersection. That's what we were able to do with the Hayden Poplar intersection. And then other projects we're just having to wait for collections because we decided not to bond and we have to pay any kind of bond costs. So that is um, where we are on T-Splast. Yeah, what's the old uh, bill? We, since Orchard Hill is entitled to a percentage of T-Splast rather than having to argue with them about percentages as well. They just asked that we would both agree to repay the streets, um, which is about six miles. And so we'll pay for the county, we'll pay half, um, which I think was $300,000. And, and then the county will handle getting that thing. All right, moving on to ARPA. Um, there are a few active projects that we have going right now. Uh, we have purchased a generator for the police department building and that concrete pad has been poured. So we're waiting for it to arrive. Hopefully early July. That is something that for our CLIA accreditation and other standards, we have to have backup power to the police department. Um, we also are going to use ARPA money to replace the elevators here in this building. We come in here any given week, we may have one, two, or three elevators down. That's because they're almost 70 years old, I think. So finding parts for them is no longer even doable. We're going to have to replace them. And then also we um, the HVAC system in the IT server room uh, somehow was not replaced when they did the entire building a few years ago or has not kept up to the demand that we have expanded um, in the server room because of all of this the technological data that we have. So we are going to have to upgrade that HVAC system. Um, and there was a 50 week lead time on that back in April. So hopefully by next year, we'll have that um, completed. 
the biggest project that y'all have approved within ARPA that is ongoing is the theater four fiber expansion. Um, because of the storm, there are some delays in getting that fiber, those fiber strands hung uh, because poles were taken down and so they weren't, they're no longer make ready. So the electric department and Coastal Radio and the telecom is working through that. Uh, we hope to be running conduit into our data center here by the end of this year and also start marketing for um, that availability. And we want to have customers online in early 2024. So that is still moving um, along just a little bit postponed. The next thing we want to talk about um, that I think we really haven't discussed lately, and this is going to come up in budget, um, and, and ARPA, just one thing about ARPA too, we did not even put ARPA in the budget this year. It's not a new revenue. Um, what we intend to do is if we decide there's another project that we need to use ARPA from, we'll do a budget amendment at that time, but we don't want to um, actually specify any more ARPA funds because we're just sort of in a holding pattern with everything else we have going on. Um, but another, another fund that we don't talk about often that does have some money in it that can be used is our TAD1 and our TAD2. So if you can tell from the screen, TAD1 is a little bit bigger than I think people realize. It goes down to Poplar Street and then all the way up to Armstead Circle on at least the east side of Hill Street. Um, so there's a lot of different uses that, that you can um, use your tab money for. A lot of it is in regards to buildings um, and rehab of buildings, whether it's for uh, business, commercial, industrial, governmental, educational, char charitable, or social activity, uh, the expansion of public or private housing. Um, you can also use it for sites that have historical significance. Uh, you can use it for open spaces, green spaces, or recreational facilities. You can use it to maintain public art um, and arts and cultural facilities. You can use it for mass transit. Um, it can be used for telecom infrastructure. It can be used for the improvement of, of pedestrian access and safety, improving or increasing the value of property, and then also um, any for the acquisition and uh, retention or acquisition and disposition of property for redevelopment. So it's a pretty broad use for TAD. Um, it has to be used within the delineated area. There has to be a redevelopment plan, which of course we just redid our downtown redevelopment plan. So TAD one is, is good to go. We have almost $530,000 in TAD one. Um, we have received $209,000 for this fiscal year. Um, so property tax values, it seems were reassessed in downtown because last year it was only about 122. So we do expect at this point that we should receive about $200,000 going forward um, for that TAD project. We don't have anything that we have encumbered that for at this point. In the budget though, you will see a request for $275,000 for TAD uh, for the DBA. They would like to acquire a building, rehab it and turn around and sell it. Um, a lot of DBAs are doing that. Madison is a place that they have been and have seen that happen there. Uh, Mr. Stratton also did this when he worked for Danville, Virginia. And so he's comfortable with, with how that process works. Um, Mr. Ballard, Mr. Whalen are also aware that that is going to be a request to you all. Um, and with the money that we have in that account, we spent a good bit with the SOG grants and with um, general assistance grants for our downtown businesses, but we think it's time to do a little bit bigger push and see if we can actually get something out there and get it marketed, we have, and put somebody that we want in that building. Um, so you will see that at our budget presentation on the 6th. Um, the other thing is we have a second TAD. Can we get stop at TAD 1 first? Yes. So I know that's a large area than I remember, um, but it seems like with the growth, that, the, that TAD was created, I think it's oh nine or oh ten possibly. But, I don't, yeah. I don't know. So it seems like Where's the checks and balance in regards to the tax assessor's office? Because that, that money is sitting in county appreciation from where the baseline was when it was created to ensure that we're getting our fair share on that. We don't get it separated. Um, or I, when it comes by line item, I mean, that's what we get. We're not told how that is determined. <laughs> I didn't go into the 
population were the Department of Revenue as well. So there are, uh, you know, there's other science science there, and I think more of the science in the way to go and talk about those, and there's nothing to be done about. Um, and in fact, it's a little bit more complicated to think about biotech as well. Um, so, but that, we did look at that with that was a little bit of 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 a Y'all bonded a, um, or y'all issued a bond for Kroger and some redevelopment that needed to take place for Kroger to come in out on Highway 16. So this is for what we call the Kroger TAT. Um, but you can see the boundaries there. It incorporates the commercial cluster east of 1941, south of West Taylor, and then west of Hammond. Um, but then only on the parcels fronting the south side of West Taylor as you go east of Hammond. 13th Street, it goes pretty much all the way up 13th Street, um, but does not include some of the residential properties on that side. And then also along Experiment Street to the uh, west of the railroad right of way, and then the boundary along Lovers Lane to the south edge of the railroad. So it's a very large TAD as well. Um, that TAD has $1.9 million in it. However, that TAD is encumbered because of our bond payments. So we have about $900,000 left to pay off our, our bonds for Kroger. Um, they were issued in 2008, I think it was, and they are paid off in 2038. So you still have several payments to make, but even in making all those payments, you already are a million dollars over what you'll need to make those payments. So you have some money in that TAD that you could also use for some kind of project in this is sort of the West Griffin LCI. If you remember that um, update, that was pre 2016, not on 2012, 2013, something like that. It is a little old, but it is still has some really good stuff in it. Um, so that is something too that you can look at um, for the next few years. Any questions there? That's all I have. So, a lot of op opportunity for us to improve growth. So a lot of opportunities, and then also, of course, some some sort of um, just we don't know yet um, with what when we'll get back reimbursement. We're still paying bills that are coming in from storm damage that will continue for a while. Um, so, although we are doing okay right now, we have not had to pull from fund balance to do that. Uh, I am still very cautious at using a bunch of this money for things outside of what is already sort of planned for it to work. When, when we want to know when will we start receiving money back from That's a great question. I asked it this morning, actually. I, I don't know. Um, we are doing it in phases. We did not want to hold everything and submit it one time. So far, we're doing that so much that actually even our first project, we ended up splitting out because they were contesting the rock that we had to buy to be able to get trucks into the landfill. And so we don't argue with them about that $500,000 rather than go ahead and give us back the 2.6 that they say is perfectly fine and we'll give us that. So that project even of itself has been split out. However, it is with the CRC, which I don't even know what that seems for, some of their review, um, groups at FEMA. So that means it's well on its way. They've already asked a couple of questions about it. Um, our consultant is handling that for us. So we meet with FEMA again Thursday uh, and should have an update then. But they've been very pushy about us submitting projects. We, we think it's because they want it off their plate, FEMA's plate. Unfortunately, once FEMA signs off on it, FEMA's not the one that actually issues the check, GEMA does. So it comes all the way back to the state and the state looks at it again, and then they submit the check to us. Yeah. Is there any money that we are going to receive back that comes through the county no. to us? We've got it. Okay. We're our own applicant this time. We have not really done it that way before as far as storm damage. I think we did it separately for COVID. Um, but for storm damage, 
this time we felt like there was too much within each jurisdiction to try and do that kind of co applicants. Those are our own applicants. The only thing that we will have to separate or, or split is the donated resources. That is sort of looked at as almost a deductible. So we will receive back 87.5% of our, or should, if we have done everything correctly, which is still um, quite um, a lot of work. Um, but if we do everything correctly, we'll receive 87.5% back. We're looking at $15.5 million. So 12.5% of that is still a good bit of money that we won't get back. However, our donated resources is almost looked at as sort of paying off our deductible because what it's showing is that the local um, government or local citizens mostly did a lot of stuff on their own, like donations, volunteer hours, those kinds of things. And so then they will take that off of our what we owe um, and, and give us that back too. So I don't know what that total is yet, but we, us in the county are gonna have to split that. We're saying that it'll be split 50-50. Um, so I haven't seen that in writing yet. Fortunately, we have the same consultant that is that is um, submitting all of this for us. So I would expect that, and he and I talked about it. I don't want to put him in a bad position to have to argue to two different clients. Um, but so far, the recommendation from the county has been 50 50, and I'm, I'm okay with that. There's no way for us to know what citizen donated what part and who got what part. I mean, I, I don't know another way to do it. So. Are there any other questions? So at this time, would you like to introduce your yes, name director? I want to introduce y'all to our new finance director. Uh, this is Deborah Manning Gilbert. She works with two of us um, in DFAC. She's our living service at DFAC. Um, ended up as the region four? 14. 14. Uh, fiscal operations manager, which is large division of DFAC, but of course in DFAC County. Um, so she was over those offices, handled all of their, their fiscal operations that they needed there, and has already jumped right in. Thankfully, she is independent and a self starter because I have not been able to spend near as much time with her as I have wanted. Um, but she sat through budget with Angel and I yesterday. She's been sitting with Amanda um, to learn sort of the accounting side. So she's really jumped in, and we're very, very glad to have her. I'm going to pass it out there. So. And I'm very, very glad to be here. <laughs> and what you may not know, or you don't know, I'm sure, is that this is Amanda Morris's mom. So Amanda, that used to come down here and help us with our meetings. Um, this is Amanda's mom. So what a good reference even from her daughter. <laughs> Wonderful. We're so glad to have you in the and look forward to working with you in the future. I look forward to it. A lot of challenges here, but um, I hope I'm up to it and make y'all all proud. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else before we go into executive session? All right. So um, consider executive session, present OCGA section 5014.3b1d for the purpose of authorizing negotiations to purchase, dispose of, or lease property. Present OCGA section 5014.21 for the purpose of consulting meeting with legal counsel pertaining to pending or potential litigation, settlement, administrative proceedings, or to other judicial actions brought or to be brought by or against the agency or any officer or employee or in which the agency or any officer or employee may be directly involved and pursuant to OCDA section 15.3b for the purpose of discussing or delivering upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action, or dismissal or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? Mm -hmm. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. Second by Mr. Brock. All in favor, please join us in the rear. And thank you, staff, for all you do. I'm 
Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, we're in front of there. I'm trying to, hey, you might as well just walk with it. Yeah. Trying not to walk. Return the life of the 